everyone and welcome back to more The Minish Cap for the Game Boy Advance. And in this episode we'll be getting further through the game by going further through the Fortress of Winds I guess. So here we just want to hit these two hours just like you know I did in the previous episode because they will unlock doors. And again we'll be given another puzzle that's very similar to the one we did before except honestly I think this one has a really good use of duplicating ourselves. Because you see these tiles here, when we try to make another copy of ourselves, we'll have to do this. It will put us, you know, from the top to bottom, and allow us to push this out of the way. But, what you've really got to do next is this. You've got to do it the other way. Now, I remember when I first played Minish Cap, that took me an awfully long time to do. And you don't know how frustrating it was and all that. Well, to be honest, I wasn't really frustrated, like raging or anything but it did kind of bug me for a bit and I just found it a really clever puzzle overall. Although I did a bit of a mistake there earlier because I have to push this out of the way first and then it should work. Great, I practice on the files but then I forget what to do. Brilliant. So let's just clone ourselves again and push it out of the way because it will bring us to this lever and when we pull it the same thing will happen basically where a key falls down. And honestly, this game has a really good sense of depth, like I was saying when we was climbing up Mount Crenel. Because, you know, it just, you feel really high. And that's what I really like about it. It's almost like Mode 7 on the Super Nintendo. But I guess I'm just rambling on a bit here. Still, with the key, I guess we will now be able to... Wait a minute. Have I only got the... What's going on? I've only got one key. That's weird. Okay, I'll be back in a bit, guys, because I think I've made a bit of a mistake. Oh, no, I didn't. I just forgot to collect it. <laughs> oh, that's just brilliant. I make a key, and I forget to collect it. That's just great. I swear that happened last time when I recorded this with a camera. Oh, great. It strikes again. How weird. But with that out of the way, that was really weird. How about we take out these Stalfoses, or Stalfots? Because, you know, I like saying... Stealth off, so deal with it, I guess. <laughs> I can pronounce things how I want. You can't make me pronounce it the way you want or anything like that. Still, we'll just take out this Igor statue with three hits, and I really didn't do well on my timing at all there, but I still lived. Because like I was saying, if you just keep moving back, you should be fine. And with that, we find the map. Great. Worthless item, if you ask me, because I know all the flaws in this dungeon. But I'm going to collect it because I like to 100% games for you guys and all that. But that's what I mean by you needed the two keys because there will be these two doors in the way and condescending again. So we needed to use them to unlock them and allow us to access different floors and all that. Pretty much it's just the same old thing repeated but in a different layout if you ask me. Oh and this is one thing I really like. These things here that drop down are called Wall Masters, and if you ask me, they were very threatening in Ocarina of Time. You don't know how I reacted when one of them got me during my first playthrough through the game. <laughs> I was really scared, that's all I can say. Because, um, well, they just dangle from the top and they get you. It's not as scary as a Minish Cap, but in Ocarina of Time, when you get to the Forest Temple, you're probably going to freak out, definitely. At least I did. Some of you might be brave or something, but... I don't know, I'm just rambling on here. Let's just go into the centre and take out this Dark Nut, because, well, it just suddenly spawns, I don't know why. Again, I find the Dark Nuts less stressful than they were in Zelda NES, mainly because they're a bit more simple, you know, you can predict where they're going this time. <laughs> Not like in Zelda NES, because if you watched that LP, which you probably didn't, because it wasn't very good, they kind of move around the place all the time, and it's really hard to predict to predict what they're doing. In other words, you're going to die most of the times. We could go into that blue portal, but uh, that'll take us back to the beginning, although you should know that already because it's already happened in Deepwood Shrine in the Cave of Flames, so I won't go into details about that. There's an awful lot of puzzles actually in Fortress of Winds that I really like. If anything, I would say that Fortress of Winds, maybe? Oh, actually, no. I was going to say Fortress of Winds was my favourite temple out of all of them, but there is one personal favourite, and that's one we're going to be doing next, but I'm not going to give it away. I kind of forgot to show you what to do there, but don't those three tiles look a bit suspicious? Because I just bombed the wall and it revealed an entrance. 
So you know, like in the other Zelda games, always be aware of these things around you because it could lead you somewhere nice. But with that, we get the moments. Dig, dig, dig to your heart's content. <laughs> Weird dialogue again. But basically, all they are, they're just like the ones, you know, I was saying from Skyward Sword. Except in Skyward Sword, you use them to dig underground. Whereas in uh, this one, all you do is basically just borrow through a load of granite. Is it granite? Concrete? I don't know. Stone stuff, let's just say. And just explore and try to find stuff, basically. There's also this upgrade that we can get later in the game that allows us to dig a lot faster. But I think I'm okay with the speed up button. I'll show it off though as well, because I mean, well, I like the 100% games and all that. I swear I said that before. Either way, we've got the moment, so how about we do some exploring around? With them. I really don't know what to say there at all. Now this is the sort of place where you want to be quick. It's optional that you can use your Pegasus boots, but I prefer rolling instead, because it saves hassle, I don't have to swap my items and all that. But if you let go, you'll notice it starts to go away, and we want to roll it all the way across there, otherwise it would have let us fall down into the hole. Phew, we barely made it. I was certain we'd run out of time. I suppose he's right there, because I mean, it was like literally one second before he could have died and all that. Oh, uh, these guys, these are again, um, floor masters. Yeah, actually, these are... Floor masters, I think, because oh great, I just got caught. And if you get grabbed by them, they send you back to the beginning of the dungeon, so you have to go up there all over again. As I was saying, these blue hands here, they are floor masters. Or well, they could be wall masters, but I could be wrong about that, so I'm probably gonna correct myself with an annotation. Although for now, I think, I really think they are floor masters. I could be wrong about that though. But I didn't really have enough time to explain what to do there, you just attack them with your sword or hit them with your boomerang or something and just make sure you kill all of them and get out of the way I guess because otherwise when they grab you they'd send you back to the beginning and all that. And we're actually coming up to another bit which has a very good puzzle if you ask me. This is also another one that made me kind of stumped on it for a couple of days. Okay maybe not days, like minutes, but you know I was stuck for a while. And that's the thing that I kind of miss in recent Zelda games. I mean, they're good and all, but... I don't get stuck as much, if you know what I mean. I mean, granted, Skyward Sword, you know, it was difficult, but... It wasn't the hardest game ever of all time. I didn't really have moments where I just got stuck completely. I needed to use Walkthrough or anything. I mean, there were times where I got stuck, but not nearly as much as in, like, you know, Zelda NES, uh, Zelda 2, Link's Awakening, you know, all that stuff. And I just find that my own personal gripe with some of these Zelda games nowadays. They're a bit too easy, but then again, I suppose the gaming audience market today is easy gamers. Because, I mean, games just aren't that hard anymore, if you ask me. Well, that doesn't mean they're bad or anything, but, you know, I just prefer games when there's a lot of challenge. Unlike Kirby games, because, I mean, Kirby, I do like Kirby. Because, I mean, that's what it's aimed for. That's what it's always been named for. I mean, even in the NES version, Kirby was quite easy, so that's all good. But if you just change something like Zelda, you know, where it was from hardcore and it goes all casual, that kind of bugs me a bit. It doesn't mean I'm going to stop buying their games or anything and all that, but even so. And did I unlock the door? I hope I did. No, I didn't. That's just great. Okay, what I was supposed to do there is unlock the door first, then come back as a minish. Because there will actually be this secret area that we want to go to. And I guess I'll show it off now. So I'm going to cut ahead to the door. See you guys in a bit. Okay, now that we're here and I had to go in between the spikes just to let you know. Let's go down and access a new area. This bit I think is optional. But because I'm Minish already and I like to show everything in the dungeons. I thought that I'd show it off. And I've got to do a lot of burying here. So that's quite bad. So with that, when we step onto the switch, it will cause this key to fall down, and yeah, <laughs> all you have to do is try and find it, and I'm getting zapped like crazy here, that's just great. Have I got fairies? Yes I have, but because I've got a boomerang, why not hit it and then turn it into a fairy? And I'm curious actually if there's going to be any chests, so I'm going to spend a bit of time digging around in a bit. So I guess to save a bit of time, I'll do some more editing, like 
You know, actually, I'll speed it up just to make it different. See you guys in a bit. Okay, I pretty much just digged everywhere and there's not digged, dug everywhere and there's nothing there, so that was a waste of time. At least I got a bit of fairies with it though when killing off the sparks and all that, so that's all good I guess. And um, one bit that's quite weird is this. You know the floor masters I think I called them earlier? This is probably what the title is going to be, me getting mixed up with the names of floor master and wall master. When we're diminished, they can't seem to grab us. Seriously, when we're diminished, nothing can see us. It's ridiculous. Except for that boss that we did in, um... Oh, actually, no, we haven't got to that yet. <laughs> I was about to give away a spoiler. That's just great. But simply, all you got to do is... Oh, no! Okay, so he can just die this time, thank you. But, yeah, basically, I don't know what happened there. He just suddenly grabbed me and teleported me back to the beginning. Simply, all you got to do is just hit them with your sword and vanquish them. Simple stuff. And if we go out here, there'll be another area that we'll have to dig around. And honestly, there are no chests in this area, so I'm just going to spend most of my time um, eliminating these mold worms. Mold worms, I think they are? Great, I'm going to have to get myself with an annotation again! This is brilliant. But really what I'm going in here for is to break a couple of pots, because they can contain some extra goodies. As you can see there, with the one that I threw earlier, not threw, sorry, broke, um, it contained 100 rupees. Oh, actually, no, it was 50, but yeah. Simply just go in here if you want to find some mysterious shells and extra rupees and all that. Ah, on this bit, I would recommend doing this, but first want to kill all these skulls and enter the room. If you go in here, you'll see that there'll be these two holes. Before you fall down one of them, observe your map, and go down to the second floor. As you can see, the chest down there is to the right. So, how about with that, we go down the right one and see where it takes us. If I took the left one, it would have put me down and I'd have to make all my way all the way back up there again. I don't know why it came out as that, but yeah. Just remember to choose the right if you want to save a bit of time, especially if you're speedrunning it. You've got the big key! Use it to open big doors! It's a bit obvious, isn't it? Okay, I'm condescending and the game's condescending. That's just great. But, um... With that, we've got the big key, we've got the compass, we've got the map, we've got all the other pointless stuff except for the big key. How about we end this episode off here, because it's been around 14 minutes. Well, probably less than that after editing. So, in the next episode of the Minish Cap, we will be going further through the Fortress of Winds, and hopefully finishing it off. And this has been really weird commentary and a lot of deaths. So, take care guys, and I will see you in the next one.